Here is our as a brand new game from the developer Things of Its Own. It's very like the Heroes of Might and Magic games with the little twist of having a real time combat. This video is about the note editor provided by the devs. The note editor is the tool you might want to use when the predefined maps are not enough for you, for various reasons. I for example wanted more land and city heavy huge maps. You might have a different reason. There are two editors, time map and note map. Time map is more for a specific custom map without randomization, while the node map will generate a new map based on your predefined options every time you play a game on it. If you are not a genius and can make perfectly balanced time maps with a good design and you have the patience for it, then go for it. For me the node map is preferred as an editor. First how do you get to the editor? You click on new game, then custom maps, and then in grey and not centered you have the two editors. The not centered part bugs me. When you click on new node map you will have a black sheet with a brown circle in it. These circles are your nodes. Nodes have different options. Size, which is self-explanatory. Mobs, which will define which mobs you encounter. I just staying on random. And the strength, oddly represented by the pictures, but if you have already played the game you know how strong they are. And if not you should not start a game immediately with an editor. I also suggest leaving starting areas on default and for more challenge, subsequent nodes with higher difficulty. Terra is more for the looks like grass, desert, ice, so on. It does not have any influence over gameplay. You can match the terrain to the starter town, so a DK player will have a DK terrain. That would be auto. If you want to have the terrain attached to the player, you can also do that. That could be an advantage, as you could make it so that the nodes around you have the terrain of your enemy, so you know early what you play against, but this is very minor. Now we come to the objects. We can make it so there are no random objects and you have to put every object in the node yourself. I advise against that. To dedicate a node to place objects, you click on edit objects. Towns are, to my knowledge, not in a random pool, so if we want to add towns, you have to place them here. There are two distinctions, starter towns and unowned towns. Starter towns mean the player starts with that town, or even with two or more. You can even add multiple towns for one node. I took this as far as adding 10 towns until I could not reach the add button anymore. I suggest playing with one town per node or at max two. Removing an object is a bit weird. We have to unselect it via the left or right button. Then you can delete it. Symmetry center is for later and delete is exactly as it sounds. You delete a node. Speaking of delete, if you want to leave the editor, it's the escape key. You can move the whole node by clicking on it a bit more in the center, not right on the border, and drag it with you. If you move your mouse too fast, you will lose the node, but no big deal. At the right you have also options. Name of the map and the creators are easy. General node distance is how far the nodes are away from each other. This can break the editor, so just leave it at 100%. 7 day rule is for when everything resets and for spawning, borders are just how the edge of the world is presented. The only thing that really could make your map a bit strange is when you select land and your nodes will try to reach that edge, to make it a land edge. But that is not so important, you can leave it as default. Random resources and roaming heroes should be on if you played before, it's those neutral heroes and well, they roam around. Save and load is maybe the most important thing because it's the only way to revert something easy. Save your map and load if you want to revert it. Don't save before you are at a point you are satisfied with your progress. Ok, now let's make notes. We hover with the mouse a bit off the border from our starting node and click add. You will get a standard node connecting to your first one. You can break the connection by hovering over it and click cut or vice versa. Restore it by join. You can also choose for an obstacle that hinders simple progressions between nodes, like the tower or some monsters. Let's make three nodes connected to each other, with three cities, one starting and two unowned. If you want to add more players, you cannot make more starting towns. That does not work. What you need to do is use the symmetry number on the right side and for three players make it free. Then you click mirror on one of the nodes and your nodes will be duplicated for other players, which will make it balanced. 
That is one of the best reasons using the node map instead of the tile map. The connection is where you clicked on mirror. So if you do that with your starting node, all players will start right next to each other with neutral towns in the outer layer. So what if you want to not connect each other? Maybe you want a sea level or continents. Then, as far as I know, it's currently not possible. You can disconnect the mirrored nodes from each other with the free symmetry button, but this converts the map to one player. Free symmetry also allows you to adjust each node without affecting the others. I suggest for balancing reasons not to do that. Generating between your editing stages shows you what a world would look like. So you should use that. And that's it. Not that big, but I did not found a good tutorial when I needed it, so I thought I should make one myself. I hope you liked it, and if you do, please subscribe, like, and share. You know, the usual stuff. Farewell.